I was born in a, a village called Buchundura. Buchundura is in a, the district of Kabare. That is where I was about around 1968. By that time, I was about uh, close to 10 years. And why that date is important, it's the day when I attended my, when I attended the first burial in my life. That burial, I will never forget it. Because there were many sick children in the village. Actually, even me, I used it for sick, but that season, I was not sick. And many sick children all over. This particular one died, and he was known to me. So I had to go and attend his burial. He had developed a bad chest, and unfortunately, his parents couldn't take him to hospital. They didn't have money. I told you the a remote area called Buchundra. The only a few people could afford to take their children to hospitals. That child could have been taken to this hospital, but the man to take him there uh, wasn't around in the, the parents' pockets. So the child passed on. You needed to be at that burial. Wearing women, and I, I was seeing them the first time. They were very sad. The men I knew who used to talk a lot were all quiet with sad faces. Yeah. And you can imagine how traumatizing such is to a young Tushemirewe who was just 10 years. And uh, this was just one, a, a one of, though I've told you this person passed on, but the major problem to what I was seeing, many children were sick. All sorts, of, all, all sorts of infections, and I couldn't understand. I, it's mostly children who are sick, not adults. Why was this sickness going for only children? But later I understood from other villages that actually, even in other places, mostly children were getting sick, and some would... Uh, unfortunately succumb and die. And that situation did not change. In fact, even now in my village, more children fall sick and more children die than adults. So, uh, fast forward. I went through school and got a job at Kawanda. And by 1998, I was heading the banana research program. And I had the duty to decide the agenda the program would take on. And that's when I, I, I recalled this problem that I used to see, which still persists in my village and I decided to read more about it. And what did I find? Number one, I learned that actually most children, yes, generally, generally children have low immunity, let's call it, have low ability to resist disease. That is a given. But then this low immunity to uh, to give rather this low ability to resist the disease is uh, also affected by other things. And uh, one of the things that uh, affects it most is presence or absence of vitamin A in our bodies, or in these children's bodies. As I continued studying, I further learned that actually all the vitamin A these children needed were, was, ex was extracted from the food they ate. There are many foods 
in our diets, back in the village and all around us that have, that are rich in this vitamin A, uh, chief among them were the animal products like milk, like uh, eggs, like liver, but there were also some plants which were very rich in vitamin A, like uh, uh, carrots, like even green vegetables. But uh, looking back at what we used to eat in my village, uh, those were not the main. The main food in my village was matoke and beans. If you didn't have matoke and beans, you'd have posho and beans. Others would have cassava and beans. Sometimes sweet potatoes and beans. And uh, in, recent, in recent times, rice has become important. So now uh, some people will have rice and beans. When you look at the meals in the village, I've covered about 70% of the meals they take. The, these meals we are taking are rich in carbohydrates and uh, they have some protein, but they are very, very low on vitamin A, which is important. Another thing I learned was that actually there are programs, government programs aimed at uh, improving on the intake of vitamin A and other micronutrients. You've heard about programs like uh, uh, supplementation, where uh, your food can be supplemented with vitamin A tablets, You've heard about fortification. The flour, like posho, can be fortified with vitamin A and other micronutrients. And the oil, cooking oil, can also be fortified. But fortification works only for towns. Not a village like Vuchundra. Nobody buys posho, nobody buys oil. So, it's, so many people are still left out. The other government program is encouraging people to balance their diet by diversifying uh, what they eat. But you diversify, you diversify what you have. These people, because they don't, they don't know about these important things, they don't have them in their diet. When in the evening, lunch, uh, morning, when they cook, what is available is matoke, is posho, uh, and the others I mentioned, and beans will be available, and other, uh, other, uh, other foods which can be used as source. So that leaves a, a deficiency of vitamin A in the children, and it's a big problem. So uh, it was against this background that I decided, when I was head of the banana research program, that we could do something for consumers of bananas, which would increase on intake of vitamin A. And uh, what, we, what we planned to do is to think of an innovation, to think of a way of uh, increasing the levels of vitamin A in bananas. That idea came, we saw it could be done, but it is difficult to do. Looking around, the bananas which could have had it, it could not be, it could not be pulled out in the conventional way. And the Gates Foundation uh, put up calls, calls for innovations, for people who had ideas that uh, could innovate and uh, solve those 14 grand problems in global health. Remember this, I am still head of the National Banana Research Program at Naro. So I, I collected my team and we prepared ourselves. And during that time, we were lucky to be introduced to another team in Australia at Queensland University of Technology. Uh, a team led by Professor James Dale, who were also interested in what we were planning to do. 
So we teamed up and, and responded to the application. And luckily enough, our application went through. And uh, uh, around 2005, we were given a grant to start. We had an opportunity to work on this vitamin A problem. I've told you our innovation was to increase the levels of vitamin A in bananas. And we wanted to do it by using the, a, a modern breeding method, which uh, we've called genetic engineering. And it's a new method, yes? The work would be doable, but you, it, you can't do it alone. Uh, it's a new method you need. You find you know something and another person knows another thing. So we divided the work. Our friends at Queensland University picked this uh, genetic material from a banana called Aspina. Aspina is an Asian banana which generates a lot of uh, provitamin A. I keep using the word provitamin. All vitamin A originates from plants, but plants do not produce it directly. They produce a compound which is a precursor to vitamin A, and it is called provitamin A. It's that compound when it gets into animal bodies that gets converted into vitamin A, which is useful to animal bodies. So when I use provitamin A and vitamin A, don't get confused. Now, we have several lines. We have, uh, we have a number, of, we have the banana plants, uh, several banana plants with high uh, levels of provitamin A, which will do the job that we intend, uh, that we plan to do. I, I think, uh, let, 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 let me explain this properly so that you understand the magnitude of success. Bananas already have a bit of provitamin A. Actually, uh, we measure it in terms of parts per million. So bananas have around 10, matoke have around 10 parts per million. So uh, the bananas we've developed now, some lines, some plants, have up to 50 parts per million. That is five times more than the local banana plant. But what we needed, what we needed to do the job, what we targeted, what we planned, is to have 20 parts per million. Now we have bananas with uh, double what we had targeted, with 50 parts per million. So the job is done. The, but uh, having said this, I want to mention that uh, it wasn't always easy. Uh, it's, a, it's a success, yes, but there are times when we almost gave up. You know, uh, down the road, there are people, some might be uh, in this room, I don't know, who started opposing the method that we were using. They started uh, spreading all sorts of misinformation, which in the long run influenced even the political leaders who originally commissioned us to do this work. And uh, some of the political leaders uh, stopped supporting us. But we didn't give up. Because when you, there are reasons, uh, several reasons why we didn't give up, but I will give you one. When you look at what this technology can do, this technology, the potential it has, the kind of difference it will make, like me, who saw children, children falling ill all the time, and I, and I know that when these children eat these bananas and 
their immunity improves, their ability to resist diseases improves. They stop get, going, go, going to hospitals. Those who are not going to hospitals, who sometimes where the illnesses progresses to progress to death, stop dying. When you look at that difference you are going to make, you are encouraged to continue. And that's what happened. We are encouraged to continue by the potential this technology is going to do. Okay. So in conclusion, in, we set out to develop a banana which would contribute to a solution to the big problem of vitamin A deficiency in this country and in the region. And now we have plants which can fix that problem. That makes us very happy uh, and we are now sure that the solution is within reach. These bananas are ready for testing. We are going to, no, 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 we are going to test them with the population uh, when we get that permission soon. And in, by, we hope by 2022 they will have been released so that they start doing what they are meant to do. My, my only prayer is that all of you who are here are going to embrace this banana because the, uh, those spreading misinformation don't uh, uh, say because we've generated it using the modern, modern breeding or genetic engineering, uh, some people are, uh, are not talking well about it. I hope you will embrace it and you will be our ambassadors uh, so that this solution gets to the people where it needs to be and we solve this problem once and for all.